Hi, Bruce Newman here with Newman Restorations. Today we are rebuilding some simplex pneumatics that had been previously rebuilt by a hobbyist. And um, he made a few pretty common mistakes and complained that the um, piano could not play because there was too much leakage in the chest and he was pretty sure it had to do with the valves. So I've got them disassembled here and let's take a look at you know what the cause of the problem was or um, problems. So I've scraped the glue off from the upper valve seat so I could remove it. I just gently insert a small knife blade and then pull outward rather than directly up to loosen it. And you'll notice a couple of things. First of all, a neoprene valve material, which I never ever recommend. It's a very unsuitable material for valves. You'll also notice that the valve is rubbing against the side wall of the chamber there. So a couple of things happened. First of all, too large of a disc was used. So the, the valve itself is too large in diameter. On top of that, an even larger diameter neoprene outer valve was used, which hangs over, creating a bit of a lip. And we have a situation where the cross valve stem is glued off center a little bit, creating this um, error upon error upon error uh, addition, which gives you enough problem, enough disalignment, so that now you've got valves hanging up and not seating, uh, allowing a lot of excessive leakage. Uh, another problem with this, I tested several of them. The valve gap is only 15 thousandths of an inch. Really should be uh, at least 32 thousandths uh, for these to operate with any speed at all. Um, let me uh, pry open a couple of pneumatics here. Now, Simplex originally did not use a hinge on their pneumatics. That was a decision they made as a company. I don't particularly like that decision. You can see how you end up with this kind of thing. Often they don't align properly when they shut because of stresses in the fabric. Um, so I certainly agree with Art Reblitz and his recommendation in his Rebuilding the Player Piano book that hinges be installed. So let me just pop this guy open here. Years ago when Player Piano Company was still in existence, um, Darrell Armstrong unfortunately sold what he considered to be a hinge replacement, which was a round disc of cloth with some type of um, self-stick adhesive on it. And that's exactly what we have here. You can see how well that works. Not well at all, they just don't stick. So what we'll be doing uh, to these simplex pneumatics and valves is rehinging them. I'll have to sand some of the shellac off down to the wood so that I get a good bond. We'll be installing new valves of the proper thickness and the proper 5 8 inch diameter um, and then properly gapping them so that we get um, you know valves that that are working as they should I'll point out one additional thing before I move on here another fairly common mistake with simplex and that is uh, the hobbyist that rebuilt these um, overlapped the cloth on the hinge end here when he glued the pneumatics. Now that's what you normally do for most types of player pianos, but with Simplex, since they are gasketed onto a board, um, this end has to be perfectly flat, otherwise the pneumatic can skew a little bit from side to side if it's uneven. And so you can see right here, not all of the old cloth was um, sanded off, and that gives us some telltale signs about how uh, Simplex originally covered their pneumatics. It appears to me that they uh, glued the cloth on the back first to create the hinge. 
and they gapped it and had a little like quarter inch piece of fabric that they folded over on this side then they would have glued the side in front with the you know whatever they were using to gap it in place and then the last um, operation would be to glue the the piece onto this side here so it's a little different sequence of events but the the uh, end result is the seam is here on the side not on the back where it will interfere with the seating of the pneumatic onto the chest so that's the job in store for us on this project so we are at a point here where we're um, cracking the unit valves open to get at the pouches but I just want to point out that um, all the sides have been carefully sanded just to get off the old uh, pneumatic cloth and glue. Pay special attention when you're sanding this end part, the part that gets gasketed and screwed. Uh, you just barely want to take off uh, the material because uh, if you get it crooked then it will sit askew uh, when it's in the piano on the stack and that can cause some problems. So you just take off the minimal amount. I use a 150 grit belt on my um, sander and that seems to do the trick pretty well. Uh, you'll notice with the sides cleaned up you can definitely see the glue joint here between the two wedge shaped pieces. This bottom part is what holds the pouch. You can see the wooden dowels that have been drilled in sideways so that the screws aren't biting into end grain, they're biting into the side grain of the two dowels. So that was certainly uh, wise of Simplex to do it that way. Uh, so we're ready to go ahead and start cracking these guys open to get at the pouches. Lay your knife right on that seam at just an ever slight angle so that you're coming in slightly from the corner. Just give it a couple of taps and then you'll hear it pop. In fact, this one popped all the way across, so I won't even need to tap the other side. Just wedge your knife in there and then gently push down. And there they've come apart. You've got the pouch, of course, here. And then the upper part where the valve goes right here. Um, oftentimes, a little bit of the wood will come off, especially at this thin end. Don't worry about it. You'll have sometimes large pieces that stay glued on. The most important areas that need to be sealed are above this hole. So even if you have chunks of... Um, you know, the, the pouch block that end up remaining glued on here, it's not going to hurt a thing. Um, let's pull this pouch out here. I'm going to make new lifter discs um, out of fiberboard. It's about the same thickness of, as this. It's just a little bit stiffer and smoother. You can see the pouch tears very easily. It, it's pretty rotten, uh, not airtight like it should be. If you look at new pouch leather, you can't rip it. It's, it's very tough. So obviously anything like this, if you choose to leave that in a piano, it's going to have a very limited lifespan. And I you're not going to get the performance that you want anyway because it's going to be leaking a lot more than it was new. So of course the next step will be then to very lightly sand these just to get the glue and a little bit of leather off from there and then we'll repouch. I'll just go ahead and do one more. Once again, you can feel it pop. And 
And there you go. Oh, I do want to make one comment about um, the uh, dishing of the pouch. Several of the pouches had almost no dish to them at all. I don't know if they shrink a little bit over time. Um, you have to have a fair amount of dish on these pouches, and, and here's the reason why. With the valve in place, so this is a valve stem that's about a quarter of an inch long. You can see that the valve or the pouch doesn't have to go up very high before the actual pouch disc uh, runs a danger of blocking off the um, um, hole here that the, the pouch stem travels through. Of course, that would make the pouch act like a valve itself and stop any suction from getting to the pneumatic, causing the pneumatic to work very slowly or poorly. So the stem has to be long enough to ensure that the valve hits the top valve seat before the pouch itself can close off this hole right here. Well, in this case, it has to be at least a quarter of an inch and probably a tiny bit more. Well, if your pouch is not dished enough, by the time you glue um, you know, the disc onto the pouch, you could have a situation where the pouch is actually holding the valve up so that it can't properly seat. So it is important to get uh, a fair amount of dish on these pouches so that you don't have any valves that are hung up and causing leaks. Okay, so we're to the point where I've installed almost all the pouches now, but I just wanted to go over um, how that's done. We have our pouch dishing tool connected to a vacuum source. And of course, it's the proper diameter for the pouches that go in the simplex. I've got my pouch leather circles punched out and my hot glue ready to go. So the first thing I do is put the pouch on the pouch form. Of course, with the suede side facing out, that's the part that gets glued down. And just check to make sure it's evenly aligned all the way around. Okay, set that aside. And I've got my glue brush set up so that it just, just the bristles are in the hot glue. That saves uh, glue from running down the brush and getting too much glue onto the pouch. And I just run my finger in there to make sure I don't have any glue on the edges. Then once the pouch is in place, I set it on a warm iron on top of a piece of thin plastic. That flattens the pouch out. It also melts the hot glue further, causing it to soak into the pouch leather and the wood for a really good bond. Flipping around 10 seconds or less is all you need. So there's the pouch installed on the pouch block. We'll do one more real quickly. I've just taken a regular artist brush and clipped the bristles short to make a good brush for hot glue. Something around eight to 10 seconds is plenty. And there we've got a pouch.
we're at the stage in the process now where all the pouches are done, they've been glued on, the lifter disc is glued on to the center. And now I've got each corresponding board heating on a hot aluminum plate sitting on top of my iron. So of course the chamber side of the upper board is warming and the pouch side of the lower board. I don't have a cameraman to help me out today, so I'm on my own. Um, the ones in the back here have dried already. These ones with the rubber bands on them have been glued and are currently drying and setting up. So the process is you install hot glue on this board here making sure that it's thickest right here because the one place you don't want there to be any leak is between the valve, the vacuum side of the valve chamber and of course the hole that supplies vacuum to the pneumatic. Um, these guys sit together like this when they're glued and then this allows the vacuum from the valve to enter the pneumatic and close the pneumatic. Once I've got the glue on there, then I put two rubber bands on to hold it tight and in alignment. And then once the glue is set up, you can take the rubber bands off. Okay, I'm going to try putting the camera up above my workbench and we'll see if that works for filming here. So we put our thickest bit of glue right there between the vacuum well and the hole that supplies the vacuum to the pneumatic. Then grab the pouch board, put them together. And grab a rubber band. And make sure everything's perfectly aligned. Put it back on the glass and press down to make sure it's perfectly aligned on the back here. I'll do another one. down, make sure everything's aligned, and you're good. We're ready to hinge the pneumatics now. I just wanted to point out, now that the glue is dry, you see you've got a nice joint there on both sides. I just ever so lightly touch this up with sandpaper to make sure that we had a, a nice clean edge to do our gluing on. One thing I really like about hot glue is as it dries it and the moisture goes out of it, it actually sort of shrinks and makes an even tighter bond. And you can see that um, 
there's just no gap there at all. And any small gaps remain filled by the glue because it doesn't you know, completely shrink away and leave any air void. So it really is, not only is it the traditional and proper glue to use, it's just an amazing glue. I can't speak highly enough about it. I really enjoy working with it. Okay, so the first step is install the glue. Use a fairly thick coat because you want that glue to soak into and permeate the cotton tape. Center it and press just for a couple seconds to get that glue melted. And then carefully lift up and fold and that plastic will come right up with the cotton tape because it's soaked through with the hot glue. And put a rubber band on it and just double check your alignment so that it's exactly where it should be. And that's ready to go. I'll do one more quickly. Get set up with our plastic and tape first. And once that's dry, you'll have a perfectly aligned, very strong hinge. The newly hinged pneumatics have sat overnight, so that glue is nice and hard by now. So the next step is just to take the rubber bands off, pull out the little plastic piece, and clean them up a little bit. So I'll go ahead and do that now. You can see how that plastic comes right out, doesn't stick to the glue at all. And of course it has prevented the hinge from sticking to itself right here while the glue's dried. There's usually a little bit of hard glue on each side that has squeezed out during the hinging process. So I just take a file and knock that out. And then sometimes there's just a little bit on the leaves of the pneumatics. And then just a quick cleanup of the bottom. This part right here gets reshellacked. This is the underside of the pouch well. So we want to make sure that's completely sealed so there's no leakage at all between the pouch well and either the atmosphere or vacuum that is in the pneumatic depending on whether it's on or off. But once that is uh, shellacked, then these are ready to recover. Okay, so we're to the point where we're ready to cut out the pneumatic cloth to cover the pneumatics. Now normally, once you determine what the span is, you simply measure across the open end of the pneumatic to determine how wide you should rip your cloth. In this case, it would be about an inch and three eighths. However, because of the geometry of the simplex pneumatic, you've got this extra wood over here that has to be covered by pneumatic cloth. Obviously, it's really important on this side so that this chamber is covered and made airtight. So you have to add a little bit. I added a half inch that was generous, um, but it gave me plenty to, to trim later on. So basically in the end, these ones ended up being about two inches. So I just make marks on my cloth, two inches apart. 
Take the scissors and make a little snip right on the mark. Now, note that the, the length of the cloth is running this way, so I'm ripping with the long length of the fabric. If you look at this end here, this is cross. You notice it's not straight because the threads that run crosswise across uh, the fabric aren't nearly as straight as the threads that run the length of the fabric. So you get straighter tears. So just like cotton pneumatic cloth. Oh, by the way, I do want to point out this is the nylon pneumatic cloth that David Ramey sells at dcramey.com. So it just rips like the normal cotton cloth. Okay, so we will set this aside for the moment. So I've determined that it's going to take 10 and a half inches of cloth to go around the pneumatic, plus leave a little bit for overlap and trimming. So I've got a board here that's marked in 10 and a half inch increments and a couple of binder clips. So I pick up the strips of cloth. I do four at a time because I, I've determined that that's the number that I can cut all at once with a pair of scissors reasonably. So I'm orienting these all the same so that the fabric side is up and the coated side is down. And with the ends lined up, I clip them onto my board. And just take my scissors, cut right along the lines I have marked on my board. And this way I'm cutting four at a time. Now we've got our fabric cut out, and just to test it, we see that we've got plenty to go around it with some overlap. So we're ready to go downstairs to the uh, workbench and start covering pneumatics. Okay, so here we are at the workbench, and I have it set up for covering pneumatic or covering pneumatics. I've got a warm iron right here, not so hot that you can't touch it for a few seconds without it um, burning you, but just warm enough to, to warm the cloth and glue. I have a square of felt with some tape on it and a couple of indicator pieces of tape here. So what all this is set up to do is these two pieces of tape 
show me where to place the cloth. This strip of tape shows me where to place the edge of the pneumatic once I've got glue on it. And then that way, everything is lined up just right for when I glue it so that I have my seam right here on the edge. And we'll get into that in a little more in just a second. But let's go ahead and glue this guy up. I, I will mention that I was really prepared to hate working with PVC e glue and nylon cloth, uh, but I've actually really grown to like it quite a bit. Um, and one of the reasons is it's, it's really almost completely airtight. Let me grab a pneumatic that I covered quite some time ago that has no air in it. Oh, actually, here's one that <clears throat> has one that I can block. So with my finger, my thumb over this hole, you can see that pulling the pneumatic doesn't open. It's that airtight. Once I open it, of course, then it opens and closes. But it's really very airtight stuff, which I like. <clears throat> All right, so let's do some gluing here. So I put the tool in that gaps the pneumatic. Put my glue on the ends. The warm iron warms the fabric, warms the glue, and just sort of makes everything ease out and work better. I can rest that on my felt here, and that helps to make the a better bond. Okay, so using my index finger and middle finger, I hold the newly glued end with my thumb. I can hold the back end of the pneumatic. And now I'm ready to do the side. You want just enough glue to cover the wood so that it looks white. Too much glue and of course it can squeeze inside the pneumatic and cause problems in there. All right. Now grab your cloth and sort of gently tug it from side to side until you find that perfect spot where it's going to lay down smoothly with no creases or wrinkles. And put it back on the iron, pushing forward to just help tighten it. You want it good and tight up in these front corners so you don't have leaks at the corners. And do the same thing on the other side. Once again, you're holding this newly glued edge with your two fingers. Now, with your pinky and ring finger, you're holding this fabric up so that it doesn't peel away from the bottom. Of course, it's critical to get this side airtight around that saw cut. Do the same thing, find that wrinkle free spot. It really helps the glue to spread out. OK, 
Okay, so that is ready now to set aside and let dry for a couple hours. So this one has dried and we're gonna go ahead with the next step. So first I trim it a little bit. I make a little diagonal snip here and here. And trim the top. And this side. I notice I'm just gonna trim up to my snip and no further. This side gets trimmed flush with the back of the pneumatic. And this side gets trimmed so that you've got just about a quarter of an inch left to fold over and glue onto this side. So when you're gluing the back, you want the pneumatic to be in the closed position. So shut it and put a rubber band on it. Using sort of a dabbing motion, you can spread the glue around. Okay. Just fold your fabric over. <clears throat> Put it on the heat. Any little bit that squeezes out on this side, rub off. Because you don't want a blob here that's going to cause a bump as you come around this corner later on. Okay, set that aside to dry. Here's one that's already dried, so we can go ahead and go to the next step. Remove the rubber band so you can open it up again. The movable leaf side, you want to trim at an angle like that. And then cut that off. This side doesn't matter, you can just trim it straight across. The reason why is, once again, the parallelogram geometry of the pneumatic. When you fold this down, this is naturally going to lap over with a little bit of extra. This side, though, by cutting at an angle, I've got enough to glue nicely, even though it angles this way. So to glue it, you put a bead of glue right in the corner there. Fold that over. And gently Squeeze out any excess glue. Notice I'm holding the pneumatic open so that I get a nice flat gluing surface. Give it a little bit of heat. If you get a little bit of glue on your iron, that's okay. It just sort of rubs right off. Okay, so that is ready to set down and dry. And here's some that have dried, so you just have a little bit of quick trimming to do. And now you've got a recovered pneumatic.
We're to the point where all the pneumatics have been recovered and trimmed. So at this point, it's time to open the holes for the screws, the vacuum supply, and for the underside of the pouch. And I discovered that one uh, additional benefit of using the nylon cloth is it melts pretty easily. And so by just taking a round-tipped um, soldering iron, you can just melt the holes open. Now, of course, the uh, any little bit of glue that's in there will expand with the heat, so that needs to be cleaned out later. But that's pretty simple to do with a, a drill bit. And even the large square hole is pretty easy to open up. And um, the hole to the underside of the pouch with just a quick clean out with a 964 inch drill bit. And you've got all your holes ready to go. I'll probably take a small knife and just clean out any tiny little bits of debris that still may be um, on the inside of that hole there, but they're pretty much ready. Okay, we're in the final stretch here where we're installing the valves and gapping them. So um, I've got all these done now. There's just about five of them left to complete. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate the process involved here in uh, installing the valves. I've got discs with valve leather glued with the suede side out. That will be the top of the valve. Then of course I have discs with valve leather with the, the shiny patent side out. So that will be the lower valve that seats on the, on the bottom valve seat. So the, of course, and I've got the uh, upper valve seat that I have um, finished and, and flattened on emery cloth on a piece of glass. So that's ready to go. I selected the fiber washers and the leather so that when everything's together, it's a little bit thinner than the, uh, the valve should be for the appropriate valve gap. And that way I can adjust the valve gap using various thicknesses of uh, paper. So I have 10 thousandths, 5 thousandths, and 4 thousandths that I can use to glue in between the two uh, valve discs here to change the spacing. So first thing I do is just take a little piece of emery cloth that's glued onto an old valve and just make sure that bottom valve seat is perfectly smooth and that there aren't any problems or bits of glue on it. Then I put the bottom seat in and with this tube connected to the pouch well I can just make sure I've got clearance between the valve stem and the pouch lifter disc. Then I set the top of the valve in, put the valve seat in, and then with my gauge, with the plunger touching the valve, When I zero it out and then inflate the pouch, I can see that it's traveling 45 thousandths. I want it to travel 35. So I need to reduce the valve travel by 10 thousandths of an inch, which means I need to glue one ten thousandths of an inch piece of paper in there. Because the glue itself adds a little thickness, I very lightly sand the fiber washers. It doesn't take much glue at all. You just want to 
dab a little bit on there. I press it on the glass to make sure there's no air trapped in there and it's perfectly flat. Okay. Drop that back in there. And then we'll do a double check to make sure we got where we wanted to be. Readjust. 35. Right on. That's exactly where we want it. So, I unscrew the valve from my jig here. And I'm just going to install a bead of PVCE. Notice I'm not gluing it down. I'm not putting glue underneath the valve seat. I'm just using it as a sealer so that when somebody needs to rebuild this in the future, all they have to do is scrape that off. Okay. So that is ready, it just needs to dry. We've got the valves installed and gapped, and so now it's time to uh, test the pneumatics really quickly. I've got it uh, attached to a little testing jig here We've got vacuum source. There's no bleed cup built inside the individual unit valves. Those are in the chest. So here I've added a bleed cup stuck inside this line, which connects to the vacuum line. So that provides bleed to the underside of the pouch. Um, so let's go ahead and turn on the suction box. So I'm running about 15 inches of vacuum. And I've got approximately eight feet of tracker bar hose on here. So you can see the pneumatic is operating. Let's go ahead and double check our valve travel. Right at 35, just what we want. Another thing you can do is test to see if you've got any leakage from the, your valve, underside of the valve, by just closing off this hole. If this pneumatic were to close, then you know you've got leakage there. But obviously it's not closing, so we know that we've got a good seal on the lower valve seat. So then the last task is making all of your gaskets. I never have really liked the um, cork rubber gasket material. I, I don't think it's forgiving enough. Um, and so I prefer using um, suede cow leather. Uh, this is the leather that Columbia Organ Leathers supplies. So a really nifty way to do these quickly is of course, cut your squares out to the proper size. And then I made a little ink pad stamp, uh, gluing on bits of leather, uh, showing where the various holes need to be. And then with your ink pad, you just ink it up. And then stamp. Then you can very easily punch your holes out. Thanks.